So we're going to look at assigning a 1H NMR spectrum, and this is covered in the molecular characterization chapter, which is chapter number 12. The first thing we're going to do is consider the guidelines that were covered in this chapter for assigning a 1H NMR spectrum. And there are four steps. In step one, we need to use the number of resonance signals to determine how many types of hydrogen atoms are in different electronic environments. In step two, we're using the integration curves to determine the relative number of hydrogen atoms giving rise to each resonance signal. In step three, we're identifying the types of hydrogen atoms from their chemical shifts. And in step four, we're going to use the splitting pattern of each signal to work out the number of hydrogen atoms on a carbon atom adjacent to an observed hydrogen atom. So we're going to look at an example in a minute where we're going to apply each of the four steps to identify an unknown compound. Before we do that, we'll just look at chemical shifts. And this table here shows the range of chemical shifts of a variety of hydrogen atoms, starting at the very top, the highest chemical shift value, typically for an aldehyde, and going to an aromatic ring, to alkenes. Here we have hydrogen atoms on carbons next to very electronegative atoms such as oxygen and nitrogen. Here we have chemical shift values for hydrogens on carbons next to electron withdrawing carbonyl groups, next to alkenes. And then right at the bottom here with the lowest chemical shift values, we have hydrogens on alkane carbons, CH2, and the lowest CH3. You'll notice that when we have OH and NH hydrogens, we have variable chemical shifts. So let's now have a look at this particular example. And uh, we know the molecule has the formula C4H8O. And so we just need to identify the structure of this unknown compound from the NMR spectrum. And it's worth pointing out that this signal here, this very small signal, is due to chloroform, CHCl3, and it's a residual amount of the chloroform which is present in the deuterated solvent, which is deuterated chloroform, CdCl3. So let's now look at applying our four steps to assigning this spectrum, and in step one, we're going to be looking at the number of resonance signals that we have in the spectrum, and we have one, two, three, four, so we have four different types of hydrogens, in step two, we're going to be looking at the integration curves for each of those four signals. And when we do that, we get a ratio of hydrogens of one to two to two to three. So this indicates a CH, a CH2, another CH2, and a CH3 unit within the molecule. In step three, we're going to use chemical shifts now to look to identify fragments or partial structures that could be present within the molecule. If we look at the highest chemical shift value first, this one up towards 10 ppm, that's characteristic for an aldehyde hydrogen. If we look at this signal towards 2.5, that's characteristic for CH2 adjacent to a carbonyl. Near 2, it's characteristic for an alkane CH2 in between two saturated carbons. And then right at the bottom here for CH3 and an alkane chain. So from the chemical shifts, we've got an indication that we can have these four different groups, if you like, or partial structures present in our unknown molecule. Finally, we're going to be looking at splitting patterns for each of those signals. And we'll start at the lowest chemical shift first. And you'll see that the signal near 0.97 ppm is a triplet. And this is consistent with the CH2 being adjacent to the CH3 that gives rise to the signal. So the CH3 signal here is split into the triplet by the adjacent CH2. This next signal up here, around or near 1.7, contains six lines. And so this is a sextet, and that's consistent with the CH2 being split by five neighbouring hydrogen atoms on adjacent carbons, namely this CH2 here and this CH3. So those five neighbouring hydrogen atoms split the signal for this CH2 into six lines. For the signal towards 2.5, we 
we see we have this broadened triplet, which is consistent with this CH2 being split by the hydrogen atoms on the neighboring CH2. And this slight broadening of the triplet is associated with a coupling between the aldehyde hydrogen and the CH2 here. So this unit is consistent with this splitting pattern. Finally, the signal for the aldehyde is essentially a singlet. So when we put all that information together, you can determine that the unknown compound is actually butanal that's shown here. The CH3 at the end is hydrogens in green, associated with this signal at 0.97 ppm. Hydrogens in blue, associated with the signal around 1.67. In brown, associated with a signal around 2.4. And finally, the aldehyde signal way up near 10 ppm.